Hello everyone and welcome to the Zero K post team 1v1 tournament. We're just getting everything going as we have been waiting a little bit for the brackets to be set up, but they're basically going to be starting with a match between Steel Blue and Mackie once they get set up. But for now, just also point out that, hey, this is a 1v1 tournament after the Steam release with like 20 signups. This is amazingly large for Zero K. I'm quite, ex I'm super excited for the fact that we have managed to get this going. Like this post Steam, or the Steam release has been as successful as it has been. So man, this is going to be cool. The tournament setup, by the way, is going to be a little bit hard to show since the brackets aren't really full. But basically, we have four groups of players, eight players in each group, and or sorry, five groups of players. One of them has four players, and those groups are going to be fighting with each other in a bun in three best of one matches. So the idea is that there's group winners for each group, and the groups are sorted more or less by relative ranking. However, that is still a reasonable system. It'll be three matches, probably about an hour or so. And from there, we'll have winners from each group. Not sure exactly what prizes there are, but this is essentially just a starter tournament, just to really get our handle on how to run tournaments with 20-plus people, because, quite frankly, this is an amazing turnout. And it's, unfortunately, also a little bit of a tricky logistical problem that hasn't quite been sorted out. So I imagine for the next tournament, we will have that sorted. But for now, we are going to be getting on Mackie and Steel Blue on Ravaged, because that is going to be a... And that's going to be the first map. Every every round for the first round, for the first map, is going to be on Ravaged. Followed by, I believe... Let's see, what is it? It's going to be Intersection, and then Titan Duel will be the finals. So, I like Ravaged. I'm a, pretty, I'm a big fan of Ravaged. Intersection is a map I'm not as big of a fan of, and Titan Duel is a reasonably standard, mostly vehicle-focused map, which is used commonly in 1v1, so no surprises there. Really, all these maps are classic, old-school 1v1 maps. Strong maps to pick, so I'm not surprised that we are going for them. And we are going to be... We're just about ready! Let's just... Get this up, and go in, and then we will have our tournament starting! Properly! We are just about ready. Come on, go, 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 go. Okay, well we are going to get this going. We just double check the, the actual rules and logistics, because right now... It's a little bit... There's a little bit of a dis decentralized approach to this right now, but it is on! There we go! We are going... It is going to be... Akronim versus... Sorry, Akronim, Akronim's the organizer. Akronim's not playing. It's going to be Steel Blue versus Mackie on Ravaged. And that is... Going! So Ravaged, we will see the map in a second. For those of you who are familiar with StarCraft 2, it is Zelnaga Caverns. That is a map that is kind of copied over a little bit... It's, it's a bit of a latent copy over, but it is a thing that actually works really well. It's a good design of a map, so no surprises there. As you can see, we do have that set up, and like I said, it is it is a StarCraft map. It is very StarCraft-y in its overall layout, so don't be too surprised if it does feel somewhat familiar. The cliffs, however, are going to make it a bit different, because Zero K is a game where you have the gunship start, potentially. You have the spiders that can go across the cliffs. You have the jump bots as well. We might see that we are, however, seeing that Steel Blue is wanting to go for the Clokybot Factory instead. Mackie, on the other hand, going for the Shieldbot Factory. The classic Shieldbot versus Clokybot matchup. Nothing tricky with the cliffs. Just going for straightforward front frontal loaded mechanics. Mackie already starting out with a couple bandits at the same time. That's Steel Blue starting with three glaives. Both players going for a bit more of an aggressive opening than would have normally expected. Oftentimes you will see two or three glaives, but three glaives, that's the point where I'm thinking they might be going more aggressive. We'll see what they do with them, though, because what really matters is whether or not we see them go aggressive with all three. And it looks like we are seeing Mackie actually split up a little bit. They're using their bandits to try to set up a bit of a scouting on the expansions to make sure that they know whether or not Steel Blue is expanding over to the east and west. These center expansions are worth about six metal per second, and they are a common place to go after you take your natural. Which, admittedly, like I said, this is kind of a StarCraft map, so the term natural does apply. At this point, though, it is a bit of a meet-up, and Mackie is finding Steel Blue is going to be able to completely get back into, this, into their base and scout out as much as they like. There's a Convict as well that will be quite vulnerable, and this Glaive might be able to find it. It is, however, going towards the natural expansion. Wants to make sure that nothing is being built there right now, and so far there isn't. That Bandit, however, setting up a Lotus, but more importantly, that doesn't mean Steel Blue has more room to expand on. Because right now, Mackie's commander, they're busy up in the top. They haven't really managed to set up their entire base yet, whereas Steel Blue, they have, and have their natural expansion being built up as well. Mackie, however, with the Bandit, will be able to come in and start providing a little bit of pressure to make sure that, that natural expansion can be easily taken. But of course, the commander is perfectly fine with that. It'll take a Bandit for free. While at the same time, four Glaze are coming in for Steel Blue, and that's going to be able to open things up. And not only that, Steel Blue able to basically completely fend off that Bandit, allowing for the expansion to complete itself without any problems. While at the same time, Conjurer is up, and I should note that 
there's already a conjure up, and the way that Steel Blue is building up, they're focusing a lot more on metal early than focusing on the energy once they have the metal infrastructure up. Whereas we saw Mackie go for the metal and energy simultaneously, and at this point, that is putting Mackie a little bit behind. Because the thing is, you can have metal just sort of on its own for a while, it doesn't have to be completely empty from the word go. It's not a bad idea to actually set up your metal extractors early and then go for the energy, as we're seeing Steel Blue doing, and we're seeing the effects of that. They're three metal per second ahead, their energy is still in a healthy spot, and they haven't excessed any. At the same time, though, sound enough, we do have a bit of an engagement here. Bandit is being taken out. That is at the cost of a glaive, but we are still seeing Steel Blue manage to win this engagement quite well. Likely to retreat their glaives, let them heal up a little bit. There is that automatic regeneration that will be kicking in, and there it is. That glaive already completely back to full health, and with the Bandit down, the Convict will be completely vulnerable. I think there's, there's one Bandit coming in, but no, the Convict, if they're going to go down, they are not going to go down. Oh, there it is. Never mind. The Bandit not quite able to protect it, but the shields for the Convict are enough to at least buy a bit of time. That glaive... Not on a suicide mission, though. They do manage to kill that convict, and that is going to be a huge blow. At this point, Steel Blue has a complete opening into Mackie's base. Their bandits are the only thing stopping Glaives from Steel Blue from actually just completely getting in there, wrecking the natural expansion, and winning the game already. But at the same time, Steel Blue has got their defenses set up. They have their expansion set up. They have a bunch of units coming down again. So Steel Blue is in a great position right now, and Mackie looks to be looking for revenge. Mackie, however, does have a decent bandit force. If they're able to catch out a few glaives here and there, they can open the doors, while at the same time they do have bandits just hanging out. They have one of the northwest expansion or center-west expansion, the one in the lower expansion, which is Steel Blue's next likely approach target. The thing is, though, that does mean that more so Mackie will be able to know when Steel Blue is expanding. They won't necessarily know that Steel Blue has been set up, but they or they won't be able to stop it, rather, but they will know. However, Steel Blue is setting up to stop it. There are four glaives right here. And they're basically just asking for a fight, and I think that Mackie is fully aware of this, too. Yes, they have radar coverage over the areas, they know full well there are glaives here, the bandits are in position to stop this, and that is going to be perfectly successful. Mackie should be able to stop this, Steel Blue is going up the ramp, however, looks like they're actually going for a suicide dive onto that Lotus. No, they don't quite manage to do it, and that is going to be a successful defense, that conflict will survive, but at the same time, the front line taking a bit of damage as well, taking out a glaive, trying to get through this bandit, but ultimately more glaives from Steel Blue than there are bandits from Mackie, at least in the front line position. That is a problem, however, Mackie, they're pulling in a time. I thought maybe there'll be a timing that Steel Blue could take, but no, Steel Blue is able to get in a bit of an awkward position, but at least able to maintain control over the center. Mackie, wow, Mackie expanding, aren't they really expanding over to the eastern side of the map? This is, this is Steel Blue's expansion. Sorry, wrong, wrong around. This is Steel Blue's expansion. This is Mackie's expansion. But still, Mackie is actually being quite daring here, because they are expanding quite forward with only a few glaives in the back. They have a rogue as well, but, sorry, a few bandits in the back, but the, the thing is, the glaives coming in here from Steel Blue, they are going to be able to stop Mackie's bandits from being able to get in any further. But at the same time, we are not seeing Steel Blue go for that expansion over in the center. We're seeing the expansion over in the bottom, whereas the expansion that Mackie would, I'm sure, like to take in their lower, their lower area in the top left, they can't take that. The glaives have been just checking that frequently make sure, making sure for Steel Blue that there is nothing being built up that they don't know about. And at this point, Mackie, they do have that center, and I don't think Steel Blue is aware of that. Steel Blue, however, much more focused on the fact that these bandits here are not being taken out, and also the fact that these bandits here, bandit over in the top left, stopping the Conjure from doing anything. Ooh, that has got to be painful. So this one, expansion attempts from Steel Blue are coming up short, and Mackie is able to start pulling a bit of an economic advantage. This whole game, they've had a little bit of a hard time getting into a strong position, but now they have a slight metal lead. They're accessing a little bit, but they do have the production, they have the characters being set up, and so does Steel Blue. Steel Blue a little bit ahead on that production as well, so they will be able to get the army advantage once again. This one, though, attrition's basically even, the army count is roughly even. The attempts to stop the expansion, though, from Mackie are finding no traction whatsoever, while Steel Blue, on the other hand, gradually managing to push Mackie back, and that is opening things up. However, Mackie's commander is here. Mackie's commander does have the beam laser, so there's not going to be an easy way for the Glaives to get in with that moving lotus that the commander represents. At the same time, there's a Stardust at the bottom as well, so no easy approach vector for Mackie, sorry, for Steel Blue is presenting itself, but I think they're just going to go for the hard one. They have the, they have the Ronin and the Reavers coming along the south side of the map, they're going to be going into the Stardust, and that will actually be suicide. The, the Reavers will have no chance, the Ronin will. The Ronin, they will be able to tear that apart, but of course the Bandits are going to come in, and that's where the Reavers are. That's why they're there. They want to stop the Bandits from doing any damage, that is their role, but the question is whether or not they can do that in time, and indeed they can't, they don't even have to! The Bandits are not stopping this, the Stardust, that goes down, that's Maggie's Commander down, that's his entire expansion down, that could in fact be the game. And Maggie's Commander goes down here, they have 500 metal in storage, that is a huge amount they're going to lose, they're going to drop, they're going to lose their entire economy advantage, the Bandits are coming back trying to help out, but there are three Reavers here, that's not going to be any use, and Maggie's Commander 
is gonna go down. There it is. Maggie Spanner's down, and with that, we should see game. Maggie will be going for one last counterattack here, but that is going to be the entire center of the map taken out from just under their nose. Steel Blue should be able to get a surround here from the Reavers and the Ronin. Destroy this entire army that Mackie has set up, and that should be game. Mackie, however, does have that snitch. That is their last ditch effort. If they're able to take that snitch and put it into a position, that will be a turnaround. That will open them back up into this game. There is an option. But it looks like we are going to see Mackie have a little bit of a hard time actually making that snitch have any value because the problem is they need to make sure that their opponents get close and if their opponents don't get close that ma that snitch will basically get exposed as it is right now the reavers not in position but the snitch only getting one unit that is going to be a massive blow Mackie at this point with half the economy is still blue steel blue they've basically taken their entire half the map i mean the destroying this expansion was also a huge blow this is going to be a this is likely to be short but Mackie is holding on. They do not want to give this up. This is single elimination, best of one. This is their only shot at getting anywhere in this tournament, and they know it. However, what they're trying to do with it is just send some rogues off to the side. Make some rogues go rogue. Try to get rid of the expansion over to the side and maybe find some value there, but it's not easily going to happen. We already see that Steel Blue is well prepared for this. Like Steel Blue, they have radar. They have full radar coverage. They know, actually, I should say Steel Blue. They have full radar coverage. They have full radar coverage. They know exactly what Mackie is up to. There is nothing Mackie can do to surprise them right now. So I'm not really sure what Mackie has other than maybe going for a factory switch a bit further north in their base, which their radar can't spot. That's the only option I can think of. I do like that Mackie is rebuilding the expansions here. I don't see any reclaim, though, and it's worth noting there is a goodly amount of reclaim. 1,400 reclaim in the front lines, and overall there's even more in the back, but... Really, 1400 metal, it's hard to actually hold on to it. When we see the Steel Blue is coming in with the Glaives, should be able to take out those rogues, and also should be able to take out the expansion over to the northwest. So the combination of that attack should be it. Steel Blue wanted to go for that kill, and they can't quite manage it. That outlaw from Mackie and the choke point stopping anything from managing to find any real value. The Glaives are forced back, and with that, Mackie has a bit of a shot at getting back in this round. They still have some reclaim going. They still have the expansion they're building up over again in the eastern side of the map, but Steel Blue does not want to let that happen. And these Rockos, or these Ronin rather, will make sure to stop that. The Rogues are not in position to stop it. The Bands are not in position to stop it. The Dirt Bags are being sent out. Dirt Bags of all things. Those are usually used for distraction more than anything. But hey, that's not a bad idea in this situation. Provide a frontline target for the Ronin to focus on. Or the Glaives to focus on. Allowing the Rogues and the Outlaws to get in. But unfortunately, the Bandit's not in position. That Outlaw is down. And there's not much else left. One Outlaw is in the back. But it's not going to support this force. And because there's no Outlaw, these Glaives will be able to come in here and tear the Rogues to pieces. There's about five seconds the Glaives have. But that should be more than enough. As the Glaives are coming in here, able to take out the Dirt Bags. There's the distraction play, though. That's exactly what I was talking about, but it's even then not enough. The sheer number of Glaives, despite the Outlaw, means that there's just no easy way for Mackie to break through this force. Now, of course, there's a question of whether or not the Ronin can get in and actually take out that Outlaw. But that is a question being answered right now, and the answer is clearly yes. As long as they're targeting it, though. They are, however, targeting that Bandit. Not, not what I consider to be the best choice to target. But still, it is going to be that, that Outlaw eventually is going to be the focus right now, but really, Mackie is holding on amazingly well. They have that outlaw up, that stopping the Glaze from getting in, they're able to build up a bit of a thug ball, and the thug outlaw ball is the shield endgame. That is what they want to go for. And should things start to go awry, they do have the racket here, but at the same time, the Phoenix coming in here, able to take out basically everything. The outlaw is down, that opens everything up, the Glaives are just in wait, and the outlaw is down, so they basically can just go in now. Now is their chance. But waiting for another Phoenix drop just to set everything up. And that is Mackie throwing in the towel, realizing there's not much they can do. Their opponents have such a stronger economy. And Steel Blue able to take that round. Bit of an advantage the entire round, but I like the way that Mackie was able to start turning it into a less uneven round, especially near the middle. They got that center expansion. They were able to hold it reasonably well, but unfortunately they didn't have anything to stop the Ronin from getting in. They had no bandits to get in there. And even if they did, the, the Reavers were going to put a stop to that. It's a bit of a problem with Shilwat versus Cloakie sometimes, especially when your opponent doesn't have the higher economy, is breaking that back. And Racketeers, that is the way to go, but we didn't see them enough, ultimately, early on. So at this point, we are going to be seeing Steel Blue advance. They will be going up, I'm not sure against who, because unfortunately there isn't really a proper bracket. There's more just a general group stage setup, and I, if there was a proper bracket, I'd be able to tell you. I'm thinking, just the way everything is structured, they're probably going to go against the winner of Anir and Kane, which... We, I think, can actually watch at this point. Not sure this is going to go, though. And let's see. What do we have here? Do we have Mackie and Anir? Oh. Sorry, Mackie and Anir. Anir and... Anir and Kane. Are they still playing? Because if they are playing, we might as well just jump over to them and then see what happens. Where are you? You're nowhere. Apparently, is Anir and Kane... Oh, they did start. Okay. And they're on ice coffee? What? Oh, they must have... They must have finished. 
Okay, I think it is going to be it for this level up for the quarterfinals. So we will be going back to the semifinals in a second. Stay tuned for that. We will be up as soon as the semifinals are arranged. <laughs> 